Time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. We are drawing a card, and it is Pearl Beds. Pearl Beds. And it looks like Smallpox. Smallpox isn't going to affect anybody, I don't believe. It affects Heathen Colonies. Ganga Zumba is immune. Uh, let's pr pr proceed. Otto's impetuous bid from last turn made it so he couldn't uh, capitalize his Latvian family. So they're going to go in the Mercenary deck um, in order to be bid on... I guess this turn, yeah. They're going to be bid on along with the pearl beds. Unfortunately, Otto has no money. He does have two bumblebees flying about out there in boats. So hopefully he can get some trading going on. They're both sides of one, however, so they're limited in hold. Looking around the table after bidding, you can see that money is very scarce. Brezza has one. Uh, Vaughn has two. Demi has one. And that's it. Um, Demi used three to take the pearl beds. He likes pearls. And Vaughn, she got the Latvian families for two. She was bidding against Brezza on that one. And that's where we're at. Scratch that. Vaughn only needed to bid one. She wins ties um, if all else is equal because she has the highest crown number. So there we go. Save, uh, a dollar savings for Vaughn. Looking out for you, Vaughn. The plague really shook things up and made for a much inter more in uh, different situation. I don't want to say more interesting, a, a more differenter situation than you normally might find in the game. Usually the colonies, the people who started with colonies, are, are doing pretty well for money or for money-making potential because their colonies start at size three and so they can trade with a bunch of people. We are actually seeing a shortage of colonies right now, a colony hold space since the plague brought our two big colonies down to down to the first size. So many died in that plague, it was awful. Um, so what that means is Brezza right now, Brezza and Cowboy kind of have the largest profit potential. Uh, they both can get two per turn. Now since uh, Vaughn has this Maria de las Alas, Marin de las Alas, it's a, it's a male. I keep thinking it's Maria, but it's Marin. I guess females are not probably allowed to be governors. Um, People can trade with this smuggling port, but she only gets soldiers out of it. But then she can turn the soldiers into money if she wants, I guess, at the end of the year. It's kind of a weird thing. It's like a pseudo colony. It's not on here. It's just on the map. So she she also has the potential to get two as well. So what happened was Brezza went, went in, for, well actually Demi went first, but Demi didn't really do anything. Then Brezza went in and he traded with both Demi and Vaughn. Um, Cowboy traded with himself, so they each got one. And then that left Otto a little bit short. So he, he based his, our first privateer of the game. So what that means is he has a secret location where his person is, um, one of these skull and crossbones on the map. And if someone moves through there, people now have to start declaring their movement. If someone moves through there, um, he can interdict and start a battle. He didn't do that this turn. Um, but in future turns, he certainly can do so. He moves, I think he moves last, so that's one reason he didn't do it. And he also doesn't have any soldiers, but now he's going to have some money so he can start putting soldiers on his privateer and causing havoc. Bad luck for Otto. He just had a mutiny, his privateer that he had spent so much money for got disrupted. And now that means it's going to leave the game. It doesn't have a maturation year shield so it just goes away um, everything else goes a year into the future it's going to be tough on a on both um, Demi and Vaughn there and we are in a treasure year this could be interesting could be very interesting we're going to have a similar arrangement this treasure year um, Vaughn is spreading the wealth to everyone but Demi once again that, that ensures no one's going to attack the treasure cities, or it seems like that would be the case. No one really feels strong enough to kind of break apart and do that yet. So we kind of have this uneasy treasure flota, but everyone's getting paid off. Uh, Vaughn is actually getting a little bit less out of it since she has to pay a dollar to activate it every time. And Brezza, he's using up more hold space than everyone else. But if you're part of the treasure float, I don't think you can do any trading anyway. You're, kind of, you're just going around and picking up treasure. Too bad Otto didn't have that other pirate, because he would have been able to do some trading this turn, probably. Um, Brezza took the Mordita card for one. Everyone else is kind of short on money. 
and it didn't seem particularly useful at this juncture and there's more cards coming up so that's where we're at let's turn up our next card and we have yet another mutiny that's that's not going to affect anyone well it affects these cards these things are just not coming up for people that's rough they just can never get their things built because they keep having mutinies a spanish inquisition Witch hunt specify a Catholic unit to be a pirate this year only. Hmm. Heresy disrupt a Mordita card held by a Spanish player. Ooh. Condemnation place a pirate tent on any fleet. And then auto de fe disrupt a Catholic card held by a Protestant player. So that would be um, that would be Brezza. Brezza doesn't have any Catholic cards. Interesting one. Now the these uh, if they use these star um, Mordita effect, or they're called Skullduggeries, then this card's going to leave the game because it has no cap or no capitalization year thing. Cowboy took the card for a buck. Uh, otherwise, it was kind of a standard trading thing. Everyone got money. Brezza and Cowboy got two, as did Vaughn because she has that sugar mill now. Tammy's only getting one. Same with Otto. Um, we also saw people are starting to put out more soldiers, kind of preparing for things to be heated, heating up. Now we're on another turn. And we have Yucatan. No one has anything in Yucatan, it's okay. All right, that would be a cholera outbreak. All right, this one's a big one. It, it, all right, this one's a big one. Uh, it's a, it opens up Havana as a smuggling port. That means people can trade with Havana. Now, the only person who can profit from the trade on the colony side, even though someone else is probably going to hold the Mardita card, is the treasure player. She's the one, I know she owns this one, but she's the only one on any of the smuggling ports who can trade the soldiers out for money. Um, it's kind of in her interest to keep the soldiers there, though, because they protect the treasure when the treasure comes up. But more interesting is it uh, the gubernatorial raid here. It affects um, it affects Vaughn's colony. So if if you have this card, you can spend four and just take everything from that that uh, colony at any time. Which you know you're not going to get a well. I guess you could get a profit if there's a sugar mill there. So Brez is going to take it for two. No one can outbid him. And there we go. He's got a. He's been working closely with Vaughn, but now he's got kind of a stick he can use if, if she stops working with him. Otto just picked up another bumblebee for two. Hopefully he doesn't lose this one. He's going to set it right back there, and it's going to come on the board um, during C5. It was another year, treasure year, and we saw a similar split, so Demi lost out doubly so, I think, since he has two colonies now that are aching for trade but he's not been able to get the funds to get a bumblebee to have a dedicated trader. Um, so we're going to end out the decade now with Arawak Queen. Ooh. What's... Pearl bed exhaustion. Each pearl colony is discarded and out of the game. Oh, that's rough, Demi. Demi's just getting hammered here. All right. Sorry about that, buddy. Now this colony can be seized at any time along with any other heathen colonies by Demi. That's one of his special abilities. However, that doesn't do Demi a lot of good unless there's something to raid here, which there isn't, or if um, he had some bees, it would give him, he could just trade with himself, which is what Brezza did. He traded there, so he's trading less with Vaughn, but he made sure to still trade with her, um, her sugar mill here to keep her happy. Um, Cowboy traded with himself, and then Otto, he had two traders. We there's a there's a bevy of ports now. Um, uh, anyone who has a, a boatsman can find find somewhere to trade, no problem. Uh, but he could have traded with this this place as well. Brezza would have let him do it uh, in order to keep money out of Vaughn's pockets. But he wants to still stay on our good side, so he can be a part of that treasure fleet. And he sees the relationship between Brezza and Vaughn slipping away, so he traded with. Her. Her Latvian families to keep money flowing to her pockets and hopefully stay in her good graces. Um, and that's going to do it for this 
episode of the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Megatron. We're going to start fresh with a brand new decade next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Megatournament, teaching one Lords of the Spanish Main.